Okay, hello and welcome to the weather update. It's August 23rd, 2020, and uh, actually turned out to be a fairly decent afternoon. It wasn't that uncomfortable. I actually did check out some of these beautiful pines for just a little bit in Deer Park before heading over to the South Shore, of course. And uh, we had a nice, uh, then later on, like around 5 o'clock, 5.30, you had this uh, nice tropical looking sky here uh, that you had. Uh, uh, you know, with the puffy uh, fractal cumulus and some alta cumulus in there as well. And then the sunset was really nice as well. Uh, you can look at that sunset there. Uh, very nice sunset. Some distant cumulonimbus clouds there is another uh, look at it. Really nice and pretty. So, let's go take a look at our weather here. We'll just close these up and we'll get started with this weather update. It was a pretty nice day across our areas. We're going to talk about the tropics. They're very active, but... First, we're going to tell you how it was like in our area today. Um, kind of humid out there. Uh, dew points around 70 degrees. Uh, right now, temperatures are in the uh, mid-70s. It's not too bad out there. There's been a sea breeze today, so it wasn't too bad. It's still hot, but not as bad as it could be. Let's see what the high temperatures were today across our area. So, uh, Long Island generally in the low to mid-80s. Uh, not too bad. As you head toward the city, of course, you're more in the upper 80s. Uh, waiting for it to load again. Got an 88 at LaGuardia. And uh, notice we head into the uh, Devil's Lair in New Jersey. Uh, not too bad. That, yeah, well, it's still in it. Upper 80s there, so <laughs> the Devil's Lair. Uh, but, you know, it's hot in there, you know. Um, so that's... That's what you get in New Jersey. Uh, looks like it was hot on the North Shore, too. Glen Cove, 92. So the North Shore was kind of hot, too. Obviously, that's the hottest part of Long Island, especially Glen Cove. It's brutal over there. Uh, so um, let's go to the tropics now and talk about our tropical systems here. And the first one that we're going to talk about is Marco. So here's Hurricane Marco. Uh, and we're going to first go. And, yes, it is a hurricane now. Uh, so let's go to the uh, warning cone first so you get an idea of what's going on. Uh, they do expect it to weaken a little bit upon making landfall because there's going to be a little shear. Uh, but hurricane warnings are in effect now for much of Louisiana's coast. That includes New Orleans. Tropical storm warnings are in effect for, it looks like, Mississippi, the coast of Mississippi, uh, as well as uh, further into western Louisiana. Um, uh, and let's go to the... So right now it is... Uh, Located at 26.4 north, 87.6 west. Maximum sustained wind 75 miles an hour. Its movement is north northwest at 13. But we do want to read the actual public advisory for Marco as well. So Marco is expected to move near the Louisiana coast on Monday. Uh, so as of 7 p.m. as we went over this, at 26.4 north, 87.6 west, about 100 miles, 180 miles south southeast of the mouth of the Mississippi River. Maximum sustained winds are 75 miles an hour, and its movement is northwest at 13. And uh, looking at uh, the storm, actually, uh, maximum. All right, so uh, hurricane force winds extend outward up to 15 miles from the center, and tropical storm force winds extend outward up to 105 miles from the center. And the minimum central pressure is 991 millibars, or 29.27 inches. So let's take a look and see what it looks like. Uh, we'll have to go to the satellite here, and I'm going to use this site because you know loading it on tropical tidbits will take all night long. So I don't have all night. Uh, this was actually the satellite loop from earlier. Let's uh, refresh this. Get our, we'll forget about our area. I mean, there were some showers and thunderstorms that did pop up over New Jersey. And also some big ones off to the north there. It looks like northern Connecticut and Massachusetts. But nothing really affected Long Island. But let's uh, let's talk about it. I think they might even have a floater here. Let's see if they've got a floater. Um, it does not look like they do. Okay. Uh, let's just go to Caribbean Gulf of Mexico. And look at this one right here. It's the geo color. So... Here is Marco, right here. So uh, this is Marco. Uh, very small, very small storm, very compact. It looks kind of disorganized. There's another area that's just off to the right there. So it's not a really, it doesn't really have that classic hurricane look to it. It's really small, a really small storm. Uh, uh, and uh, let's uh, look at some of these other types of views here that we have. So let's do the enhanced, or let's do this uh, sandwich. 
So yeah, this is what I want to look at. So this will show you the convection here, and you'll see uh, there's the main area of convection over there. Let me see if I can find another one here. Um, I think that's the best kind to use. We could do uh, the veggie as well. Oh, that's not even showing up. Okay, well, um, that's the satellite anyway for um, Marco. Uh, I wish I could use tropical tidbits, but you know what's going to happen when I use tropical tidbits, right? Uh, you know what's going to happen. Uh, we'll do it, and, and you'll see what will happen. We're going to get the spinning circle, and uh, obviously, like I said, I don't even have patience for this. Look at this. 0%, 3%, 7%. I don't have all night. 13%. I mean, it's a great site, but he's got to upgrade his infrastructure because no, nobody can use it right now. Uh, you can see the conve I really like the satellite loops they offer on this site, though. So while that's while we're waiting for that to load, because I really do like the satellite loops, I don't like the site just doesn't have the resolution. Um, now that we're done with Marco, uh, which is going to be affecting uh, Louisiana shortly, uh, and we're going to look at the models for that again. It's going to make if you look at the advisory here, uh, it's going to be making it's going to be arriving on Monday. Uh, so that's when it's going to be arriving. Uh, so let's uh, go look at uh, Laura, and maybe um, the loop of Marco will almost have loaded. Uh, you know, we're getting there. Got to be patient, but I, I really like this because it really shows the cloud tops really well. You can see the convection here. Right, here you go, finally loaded. So you can see the convection here. Uh, really, uh, very small, compact storm, and then again, it's kind of disorganized. There's another area. A convection that's kind of coming into the Florida panhandle. Uh, but the, this is the main area of convection right here. Uh, and the, the main part of the storm, obviously. Uh, but it looks rather disorganized. It really doesn't look all that organized. But it is actually a hurricane. Uh, so let's go to the next storm, uh, which will be... Uh, well, let's f look at the, the models for Marco. All right. So uh, these are the models for Marco. And you can see it looks like it's having it just go just... Southwest of uh, New Orleans. It's not a good track for New Orleans because it's going to put a, a push a storm surge into New Orleans, which is not good, obviously. Um, and some of these keep it o the center over water, so that may mean it regains the strength. But generally, this is generally the idea of where it's going to wind up. But it's going to brush and rake the coast, which is not good because that just pro makes makes the effects over a larger area. So now let's go to Laura. And wait for the Laura to load. And while we while we wait for Laura to load over there, let's look at Laura on the Hurricane Center site. And this is the one that's actually a little more of a concern. Uh, so this is Tropical Storm Laura right now. Still trust Tropical Storm, but it's already strengthened 60 miles an hour, and it's moving its west northwest at 21 miles an hour. Uh, and uh, you can see that there are Tropical Storm warnings now in effect for all of Cuba and the western side of the Dominican Republic. Uh, but once it gets uh, once it gets away from these islands, it's going to strengthen a lot more, um, and it's going to hit the same area, which is which is insane to have this storm making landfall around Wednesday, uh, just uh, literally two days later after dealing with one storm, they could deal with another storm. How how insane is that? So let's look at the public advisory on Tropical Storm Laura. So as of 8 p.m., its location is 20 point, 20 north. 20.0 north, 75.6 west, at about 30, 30 miles west of Guantanamo, Cuba, or about 175 miles east-southeast of Camagüey, Cuba. Can't pronounce that. Maximum staying wind, 60 miles an hour. Movement is west-northwest at 21 miles an hour. Minimum essential pressure, 1,000 millibars, or 29.53 inches. Tropical storm force winds extend outward up to 140 miles from the center. This is a larger storm. An observation in Guantanamo Bay recently reported sustained winds of 35 miles an hour with a gust of 44 miles an hour. So, um, and this is so literally just two days later, this thing is going to arrive. It's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. So let's look at Laura on the satellite, uh, and you will see here, uh, this looks uh, a lot worse uh, than Marco. It's a bigger storm, and there's more convection. Uh, and uh, so once it gets away, and also the center of it is not moving over land, so it's staying over the ocean, which means it's going to have access to its fuel source, that warm ocean water. So it's actually going to gain strength even more now than it would have if it went straight over Cuba. But fortunately for the people in Cuba, they're not going to have to deal with the 
brunt of this. Hopefully it'll stay just offshore. Uh, but that is definitely not <laughs> some. This storm looks a lot more threatening than Marco, actually, in, in a lot of ways. Uh, so uh, let's go back to this and let's go look at the lightning data. Because um, there's another thing that we want to look at. And, and, and this is also important to note is lightning. How much lightning is being generated around these storms? Marco is not really generating a whole lot of lightning, and Laura is too far south to pick up, uh, but it's definitely a concern. Um, so let's go back to the models here. Oh, yeah, we got to look at the models for Laura now. So these are the models for Laura's track guards, and look at that. Almost, almost the same area gets hit, just maybe a little further to the west. Uh, and again, puts, that puts New Orleans in the east side of this. This is going to be bad for New Orleans. Uh, I'm telling you that right now. Uh, most of the models track it that way, except one, only one outlier uh, tracks it over it, it, and has it go over the Florida Panhandle. And then we might get whatever's left of it. Some remnants might pass through our area eventually, uh, you know, and maybe bring some rain later on. Uh, but first, got to deal with the landfall of this uh, thing. So uh, I say this thing, or should I say Marco and Laura, two troublemakers. This is uh, like that song, uh, Take the Money and Run. Uh, Wherever Marco goes, Laura follows. <laughs> but anyway, um, let's take a look at the models now, and we're going to actually change the region here. And we're going to go look at the, I guess the Gulf Coast right here. I don't know if this is the best view, or should I use the other? No, I think I should use southeast. Um, southeast, yeah, this one's better. Okay. So we are going to start with... The, uh, I know, look at the upper air. Well, yeah, all right. Go back to the conus and we'll look at the upper air pattern, and then we'll go from there, I guess. Looks like there's a lot to talk about. Uh, so, briefly look over the upper air pattern. You can see this. There, there's the Atlantic Ridge uh, that we have offshore. And again, we got to wait for these to load. And this is, this is the problem with the site, is that literally, let's do it this way. Oh my god. I'm going to be here all night long. Okay. Let's see. Sorry, I have nothing to do but do 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 do. All right. Uh so you can see here there's that ridge so you can see it's just going to steer these tropical systems. You'll notice that there's a trough in the east that co will come down and bring us some nice weather uh later on this week. Uh, but uh, you can see we already saw Marco. It didn't really have a significant upper air reflection, but look at Laura. That does. And this actually takes it a little further. This is the GFS. It seems like it does take it a little more over toward eastern Texas, um, uh, which is interesting. And then you can see that remnants of that kind of get caught up in the trough. But luckily, look at that. We have a trough in the east, which is great. Um, so no more heat. Uh, let's look at the European. Here's the European model, same idea, trough in the east. And where's Laura though, on the Euro? Where's Laura? That would be Laura. Very weak, the Euro is much weaker with Laura. The Euro has been missing the boat with a lot of these tropical systems, but the good news is, like I said, we have the trough in the east, the good news for us. But uh, let's go right back to what's gonna be happening in the southeast and look at the surface map here. And this is Marco, all right? So here's Marco. It actually ha actually has it hitting a little upper air shear, which might cause it to weaken a little bit. And there we go. Here it makes that landfall right at uh, the, uh, looks like right west of New Orleans there. It's going to be bad, but it won't be that. It looks like it does weaken it significantly, looking at the disappearance of the isobars there. And then here, right on its heels, comes Laura. And Laura's a little further to the west now. So this looks like it might impact more eastern Texas, maybe like Houston, something like that, that area maybe, and less New Orleans, at least, this is the GFS, but look at how much more wrapped up that thing is, that's going to be a potent hurricane, uh, probably every, every bit of a Category 2, a Category 3, maybe even more than that, uh, and then that goes in and, uh, and then weakens, uh, but wow, that is impressive to say the least, uh, that is really impressive, so uh, let's look at the wind fields, on this, so we're going to look at the wind. Like 
guess we'll first start off with Marco. So here's the wind with Marco, and we'll use different sites to look at the wind field. So here's the wind with Marco. Not the wind actually doesn't look that bad. Um, it probably will not. It may not even be a hurricane when it makes landfall uh, at New Orleans. But again, the models underestimate things. So you know they they basically they're looking at some shear, but um, it's still something. It it really weakens it quickly. All right. So there's that one. But this is the one to really watch out for. And this is Laura. And you can see, look at the purples around that. That's a significant hurricane right there. So Laura is going to be the one that's going to really uh, uh, be, the, I think, the worst of the two storms here, uh, looking at these wind, sp wind speeds probabilities. Um, let me go look at the NAM, 12 kilometer. I don't know if it's going to go that far enough out for us. It may not. But at least this will give us a look at what Marco is going to do. So... Uh, we gotta wait again. And this is the zero Z run of the NAM, which I guess we'll use at this point. And we gotta wait for. So there's Marco. It has it a little stronger, but it still has the worst of it being offshore, and it just kind of weakens it. So it's like Marco is not. It's it's Laura. This is the one that we really gotta be concerned about. I'll just put it all the way to the end. Unfortunately, I only have out to 39 hours, so you know we'll have to look at the old, the old 18Z. Nam. I should also look at the GFS parallel too. Um, so this thing looks threatening. So you can see, look at this thing. It's big. <laughs> Waiting for it to load again. Do 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 do. All right. Uh, yeah, that really. This could be bad for Houston. This could be really bad for the Houston area. That looks like a direct hit, and this is a substantially substantial hurricane there, has it? So, uh, yeah, Eastern Texas, Houston, you got to be concerned. Uh, this is becoming more of a concern for your area, I think, uh, than New Orleans right now. New Orleans, I think, will have to deal with more of Marco, and the worst storm, Laura, looks like it has its eyes on Texas uh, right now. Um, so. Um, can look at the H triple R too as well. I don't know if H triple R does wind speed probability. Let's see if it does. Yeah. All right. So all we have is Marco, and like I said, it doesn't really look. Marco just does not look that impressive even on the H triple R at this point. Um, GFS para. Let's do the parallel GFS. Uh, so um, this is Marco. No, it's Laura. What? Wow, the, the times are all different on this. All right, that's Marco. That's Marco. Is that Marco or Laura? That's Laura. That's Laura making a landfall way too early. No, something is not adding up here. Something is not adding up here. All right, if I look at this, the regular GFS. Yeah, the timing is way off on the parallel. I, I don't know what's going on with the parallel. It has Laura basically running way ahead of where it should be, so uh, I don't know what's going on with that, but I'll just... You know, so it's really a threatening, definitely a scary situation there for... Uh, it looks like East Texas with... Uh, it's just crazy having two tropical systems together like that. It's kind of weird and nuts, um, that's for sure. Uh, definitely not something you expect to see. Uh, that's for sure. Um, okay. So, I should go back to the uh, coast region here. Southeast. So, wow, that's really impressive. Um, and we'll look at more of these models. I'll, I'll, we'll go back to the NAM 12 kilometer, and I want to look at the actual precipitation. That'll be the next thing we'll do. And again, I gotta look at the 18Z because the other one just doesn't go far enough out. And again, we're gonna have to wait. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick. All right. <laughs> All right. So this Marco, not that impressive, but Laura, on the other hand, Laura really is quite impressive here. This is what it looks like on the radar signature. So wow, we have it making a landfall overnight, Wednesday night into Thursday morning. 
for uh, Texas. Wow. All right. Change gears now. Actually, I want to look at a couple of other sites with the hurricanes before we change gears. Uh, we're going to look at this site here. All right, so this is the European model here, uh, windy.com, looking at Marco. Uh, and we'll take a look at the winds from Marco here. Um, it does have some sustained winds. Well, let's see, sustained winds of 14. That's not that bad, but offshore, you're going to have sustained winds, perhaps some decent gales from Marco in the southern Louisiana, coastal Louisiana. Here's 2 p.m. Uh, we can look at wind gusts as well. Yeah, that's up there, all right. So it's 42 mile an hour wind gusts, uh, but it's not a hurricane. I don't think Louisiana. Uh, they do. I don't know if Louisiana is going to be getting any hurt. At least the Euro doesn't seem to think so. And now here comes Laura, and this is the one to really watch. See, look at Laura just like kind of brushes, brushes the coast with this thing, and it actually looks like it's doing like a little Fujiwara, and it might be getting captured by Laura. Now this is a different track. This is the Europeans track here and it has Laura uh, so we're looking at wind gusts here uh, hitting um, hitting Louisiana. Uh, but the Euro has not been all that good with the storm so I, 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 I don't I'm not buying these Euro um, forecasts at all one bit. Um, let's go look at the GFS site is better so we'll all right so here's the GFS Monday 10 a.m. so this is the GFS with Marco looking at wind gusts here yeah, is. so uh, wind gusts to 42 miles an hour so it'll be some decent winds wind gusts over there in uh, Louisiana uh, and then it kind of just dissipates. It's like I said, it's Laura that's really the one to watch. And uh, here we go into Tuesday. Here's Laura picking up strength already. Uh, this thing's going to keep strengthening. All right, should be a hurricane by uh, yeah. That should definitely be a hurricane by now. Nearly a hurricane. Oh yeah. So here we go. Here's Laura, and look at that. Uh, these are gusts, obviously. We'll look at the wind, sustained winds here, but still, that's nearly a hurricane right there. Uh, and this is Wednesday around noon. The GFS has been doing a pretty good job with these storms, so that's why I'm going to... Uh, here it is, barreling. Here's Houston right here. Looks like it's heading right for Houston. Look at that. That's sustained wind right there. Right for Houston. Look at that. Yep. Whoa, where did it go? There it is. Only thing is when you look at these calculations for sustained winds, they underestimate the sustained winds over land. Uh we'll look at the gusts instead. Uh so yeah, this is really intense, really potent hurricane here that's heading right for Houston. The good news is it's gonna move fast, I think. So look at that. Yeah, look at on the right side of the storm. Whoa, gusts. Winds over 100 miles an hour. That's impressive. Uh, but it will be a quick mover. It won't hang out over Houston. It'll it'll move through at a decent pace. Uh, fortunately, it won't be like uh, the storm that did sit over there, which I keep forgetting the name of. Uh, so uh, it will be moving along at a good clip. But uh, it is it's certainly something to watch. Obviously, and the other thing, of course, would be the waves uh, with the storm surge. Uh, look at that too as well uh, because some of these waves this would be one hell of a storm surge Galveston uh, oh, oh, 22 feet and if you look at Marco it's probably not going to generate the same kind of um, yeah not quite as much still it's going to be something but I think like I said I think Laura is going to be the worst the worst storm I think to deal with so let's go take a look at our area and see what we're going to be dealing with the next couple of days shall we why isn't this moving? And I guess we'll go start with the NAM. Why is this not going over? Okay. And look, I had it all the way to the left, and it still didn't load everything. Okay. So I'll start with a 12-kilometer NAM. And you'll see some scattered showers and thunderstorms develop. Look like mainly to our west, a lot of them, though, 
off to our west over New Jersey tomorrow. Uh, and then Tuesday, we got to watch out, too, because Tuesday we have that cold front moving through. And uh, there could be uh, – SPC has us in a, in a risk for that. So I guess we'll go ahead and look at that. Go to SPC now, Storm Prediction Center. They have us in, a, I think, a slight risk for uh, on Tuesday, I think. So let's go. Well, first, let's start with Monday. So here's the day one convective outlook. Um, it's not – we're just we're not in, a, in we're just in a general thunderstorm. And this is day two. Huh? They don't have us in a slight. I thought they did. That's oh here yours are so this is technically it's day three. Uh, so uh, this is for Tuesday, and you can see it has the whole northeast in a slight uh, risk. So this is the concern that we have. Again, this will be on Tuesday uh, with this front here, and uh, if we if we do put this into the higher resolution NAM, you'll see. Uh, wow, I don't see anything here. It's not, it's not generating. The NAM is not generating that much here, which is interesting. Again, we got to wait for the site. Half this weather update is waiting for the site. Um, yeah, and here's the NAM for tomorrow. NAM's not really showing a lot of activity, and honestly, I think it's underdoing it. Uh, let's look at the HRRR. I'll look at the zeros, the H triple R. So here is the zero Z H triple R, and you can see there's that some con isolated convection. And tomorrow, see, not it's not developing that much at all over New Jersey. That's interesting. It's developing some, not a lot. Here's Tuesday. It only goes out till you know, it doesn't really. We don't have enough out for Tuesday. Uh, if we go to the GFS. Here's the GFS, like I said, very scattered in nature. Here's Tuesday. And again, it's really not generated. It has a very scattered, uh, and then we have this high build in, which will bring us nice weather. In. But then it looks like maybe some more uh, upper level, lower instability type of uh, stuff on Friday there. Um, okay, so I guess we'll go look at the temperatures next. wait for this to load again um, as far as currently goes while we're waiting for that to load uh, not a whole lot of thunderstorm activity going on I'll look at the radar here you'll see not so much going on in our area. it looks like there was some over Massachusetts and some over say the Philadelphia area but not so much over our area okay so here we go for the GFS for tomorrow gonna be a warm one probably 90 or above North Shore perhaps around Glen Cove, New York City, uh, Hudson Valley, New, to New Jersey, and Long Island will probably be in the mid, mid and maybe upper 80s. South Shore probably cooler, like low 80s. Uh, and then for Tuesday, Tuesday's going to be a little worse, I think, because of that westerly flow that we talked about. So it might be around 90 uh, in more places, close to 90, maybe in parts of Long Island. South Shore will probably be spared that. Jersey will be above that, of course. But then you can see that front come through, and look at Wednesday. We're only in the mid-70s. Uh, Jersey, maybe closer to 80. I'll be nice and cool. Here's Thursday. Uh, and you can see it warms up over Jersey, uh, perhaps in the United, but on the island, maybe only upper 70s and low 80s. And you can see that really cool air off to the north there. Here's Friday. It looks like it heats up again on Friday, though. It looks like we might have to deal with 90 or more. And then uh, by the weekend, another real cool shot of air come, it comes in. I'm only going to go up to the end of the month, I think. Uh, and uh, it stays cool after that. So a little bit of heat this week, and then we're going to be done, I think, with it. Let's look at the dew points. Uh, these are the uh, the GFS is underdoing these dew points. It's it, it's really underdoing these dew points. The dew points are not in the 60s; they're near 70. But GFS, whatever reason, has us dew points only in the in the mid to upper 60s tomorrow. Uh, but you can see what happens on Tuesday. Winds go west, and that's why we're going to blaze. And it still only has the dew points in the mid-60s. It doesn't really get them into the 70s. Uh, but here's that dew point relief coming for Wednesday. Boom. Uh, major dew point relief. Dew point's only in the 40s, so it'll be nice and comfortable and dry. But then you can see what happens. A warm front develops, and it retreats. So we get one-day relief, and then the, the uh, warmth and the humidity comes back for Friday. 
uh, dealing with the humidity, and then uh, a Saturday, still remaining humid, and then uh, we finally see that relief by Sunday into Monday of next week, and we're dealing with some nice weather again, two points in the 40s. Uh, so that's kind of interesting there. Um, I said, I think it's underdoing it, so I'm going to look at the NAM dew points. Yeah, this is a little more realistic. Uh, so dew points probably be still around 70. Uh, I want to show two. Oh, the 0Z. No, I want the 18Z. So we can look further. <coughs> Again. Do do. <laughs> I know. I can't sing. I was singing that uh, <laughs> Jeopardy music there. Uh, uh, you can see there's that front coming through. Look at that intense dew point relief there that it brings in. So most of it looks like it's over Long Island, New Jersey. We won't get into it. It looks like, again, it's like a glancing blow kind of deal. Um, so go to the GFS, and we'll look at our skies. Oh, boy. Skies. Let's get this to load. Okay, so obviously some clouds tomorrow. But then again, GFS overdid the clouds today. We may not actually have that many clouds, especially in the afternoon. Uh, here is Tuesday. Uh, also, may not be as many clouds as you think. And then here comes that front Wednesday. Well, we may have some clouds around Wednesday. We'll have to see. This could all be overdone, and probably is. Um, and then here we go into Friday, and then we're dealing with that. Looks like a, the remnants of Laura there coming through. And then behind it, some nice weather on Sunday. Um, let's go look at the uh, NAM clouds. We have enough of it in to use, I guess. Uh, this is uh, clears us out into Wednesday. Here's Tuesday. Uh, and again, some scattered clouds, but I think there'll be a decent amount of sun. And then the same thing for tomorrow as well, obviously. That'll help get those temperatures up there. Uh, so, I think we're almost done. Um, I, that will uh, just about wrap up this weather update. So, I want to thank you for watching. I think it's been a little long one, but... Uh, you know, between waiting for the sites to go to all these tropical systems. So well, it's going to be busy. It's going to be busy this week, as it always has. So uh, take care, everybody, and thank you for watching.